today will be our second day of actually putting planks onto the boat. Let's see the size of these anchors. It's really fun working on their boat. <laughs> oh, is that good? Yeah, it's uh, Taro for that. Hey. Happy birthday. Hanging by the larboard chain was a buff old green merman. So Garrett did all of this yesterday. I uh, thought it was going to be a quick job, but uh, ended up stopping like a quarter of the way through because his uh, uh, the blade on the oscillating saw was pretty dull. So and he really didn't want to run into town, but he was able to go a lot quicker after he did that. But it still took about all day, so probably six six hours or so. Um, by the time we actually got back from the run and whatnot, six straight hours of grinding down this edge. But today will be our second day of actually putting planks onto the boat. So can you hold the inside? The inside? The, bottom. the first plank always goes up the slowest, not having yet figured out our rhythm. So how many planks are we tying together? One, two... One of the main reasons for sheathing was to add strength and rigidity to the hull. So tying together a notable amount of planks was key. Ten about. Ten a boot. Ten a boot. Step one always remained the same. Get the bevel. Later, we did about five planks at once, since the bevel, especially at midships, remained nearly unchanged. We started at midships and worked our way forward. At some point as we near the bow, the orientation of the planks will change in order to continue joining an ample amount of planks together.
taking a shower over there? Mm -hmm. With sawdust? Sawdust is the best thing to get sticky stuff off. What you got there? You know, just little gloopy globbies. I got this. Can I show you an easier way to do it? Sure. You don't need to stick it on there and beat on it because then you also shake up your beer. Oh. So just put the edge over yeah, it. I noticed that. And just press down. Oh. Just pressure. Okay. <laughs> Having a beer. Sitting and looking at what we did today. Got six planks on to the bottom part of the sheathing. And like always, that very first one we started there took a little while, but we got it up. And the rest of them are starting to flow a little easier. It's hard to film when you have tar truly everywhere but a compilation of a couple days gives you the idea. Then, while I was at work... So this is what the guys did yesterday. 11 sheathing planks. Pretty epic. And now we're off to Vallejo to check out a metal scrap yard. budget builders, we live by one man's trash is another man's treasure. We were here mainly because Tyler was in need of stainless pieces for his boomkin, but we're always on the hunt for scrap that can be repurposed. It's like three and an eighth, but that's probably fine. We weren't having much luck here. Anything else? Nope. <laughs> I don't think I'm anywhere near my uh, 10 pound limit. Yeah. 10 pound minimum. That's some thick walled stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Holy that might be overkill, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that wall is. Remember, you gotta cut it. <laughs> Sometimes you don't even know what you're looking for until you see it. But you have to look, even in unlikely places, constantly having every boat building piece to this puzzle on your mind. Yeah, right yeah. <laughs> yeah, did you see the big old ship chain there and the big old anchor? Oh, wow. Like massive. <laughs> 2,000 pound damper. Oh my god, you see the size of these anchors? <laughs> what? Of course, he had to go get Garrett to show him. These two nerds can make even a failed outing a field trip. They never tire talking about boats, especially when it's over beer. I learn a lot. Well, scrapyard, not a total success, kind of a failure, but hey, beer. Beer's good. <laughs> Beer's good. With Mare Island Brewing being right across the bridge and on the waterfront, it seemed like a perfect spot to talk more boats, which is only different than every other day because we weren't in the boatyard. Boats have a language all their own, and the only way to keep up is to be fully immersed in it. Drink like a sailor, talk like a sailor. I'm in training. Oh, I'll charge you all right. <laughs> oh, she turned on? Oh. I like your idea with the uh, little uh, drink condom there. Yeah. That's smart. Oh, nice. I think uh, I'm gonna do that. I'm about to get very seriously tarred. We're gonna cut all those guys in half and then do the dry fit like we did yesterday. 
Yesterday, the astonishing 11 plank day, a new technique was developed, cutting the bevel of multiple planks at once, then going into full tar mode. Wow, that's a really nice uh, tape measure. Yeah, do not like, get it like, tarry. Like it rich <laughs> Not allowed to be on tar. You should have like a 10 foot, like. Someone give me another one. It needs a condom 10 too. foot buffer point yeah. from the boat. <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> I'll just cover the whole thing in blue gloves. It'll work great. It's really fun working on their boat. Fine. <laughs> oh, uh, is that good? Yeah, it's uh, tar will fill that. <laughs> so we should just pack up. You got them, you got them stacked? Yeah. We should tack up as many as you want to do before uh, before four and a half months. Cool, right? Sure. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I feel like stopping by that after that top stringer would seem to work. Stopping after what? Like where the first stringer is there, where the end of the, yeah. Because then you're tying in all those that are only attached by the rabbit, the chine, and the first stringer. Because then you're still getting four to five planks, right? At the top. One more? Okay, I think it's in your hand. Good, because that's how many we cut. Perfect. <laughs> Doing several planks at once really sped things up. And like Tyler said, any little discrepancy can be remedied with tar. We completed up to the bow, then another full day of trimming the overhang. We put spacers to reserve the spots for the planks that will go where the stands are, which will have the yard move all at once when both sides are sheathed. But first, we had my birthday to celebrate. Oh. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and you can have a seat. Or is this just my throne to throne. look out onto the lunch room? Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it looks awesome. Oh, I'm so excited. So we got an email from uh, Mr. Kirby Bean that he wanted to send us a little boat something. So I just told him to send it to the marina, and I got you put the kids. And like I thought, they knew exactly where to deliver it. <laughs> so, and it just so happens to be my birthday. So it really came at a very good time. I discovered this boat hook in its present condition laying on a very remote and rocky beach in Alaska more than 15 years ago. I've never had a use for it, but thought it was cool and could never bring myself to get rid of it until now. I'm sure it has an interesting history, but that will have to be left to your imagination. I hope you can find use for it in your boat. Thanks for preserving and sharing your experiences with the world. Best of luck. I don't have one yet. Awesome. Yeah. Substantial bronze boat hook. Right on. Thanks, Kirby. Best birthday present in a while. Before the rest of the birthday festivities continued, it was our turn to give Tyler a hand reinstalling his cap rails. Bob, you excited? I'm excited. Ah, this looks pretty sweet. Water. And we got cushions. Tyler's a little upset you don't bring them out when just you and him go. 
because you guys crawl around in the mud. <laughs> a chariot fit for a tar queen, I guess. I can't think of a better crew to celebrate with. Harbor Cruise, here we go. Chain was a buff old green merman. Blow <laughs> your winds in the morning. Blow <laughs> your winds on the road. Clear away your running gear and blow, boys, blow. Now back to work. It was time to deal with our chain plates and take a little break from sheathing. So we took them off and took them over to Rolf's and welded on those thingy mabobber doohickeys for the dead eyes. Guys, and then drill a hole. Drill a hole and weld them on. This is where the dead eye is going to go, right? Yeah. Yeah, it'll have the strap or rods bent around it with a hole and then the pin will come through and lock it all together. What's the horizontal stand saw? Okay. And that's the vertical stand saw. This should stand up right there. Okay, so. This works. All set to cut. Pull to you. Pull to you. Okay. Go flat. Okay. All right. Huh. All right. So then you just set the speed. Oh wow. That's cool. So what we'll do now is we'll square this off. And if, when it goes all the way through, it automatically shuts off. Okay. See how that automatically shuts off? Nice. So that's, that's you can see it's smoother. So I mean, wow. in theory, you can just kind of deburr that, chuck it up in a lathe, uh -huh. your piece, mm -hmm. and you're set. So what we want to do, the first one is how much? Um, let me double check on these real quick. I'm pretty sure they're twos and two and a half. So, so you want straight up two or you want bigger than two or? Um, I mean, shooting for pretty much the same width of these, but okay. I mean, it's not, it doesn't have to be super precise. Well, I mean, whatever you, whatever you want, you're the boss. Yeah, let's just go to. The, the customer's always right. Okay, so, loosen up. Loosen up the chip. Okay. Right here. Okay. Lift this up. Lock it Tighten down. Back up. Put that up there. That. Make sure it's flat. Okay. Lock that. Come over here. On. Alright, 
gear. Move that valve. Yep. Yeah. Just you don't want to you don't want to crash into the steel. Just open it up. You'll feel it. Keep opening. I just get a feel for the cut. Okay. Making videos and helping Garrett sheathe the boat. What was the second part? Sheathing the boat. So we're adding. Sheathing? Sheathing. Oh, sheathing. 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 What are we sheathing it in? Douglas fir. Basically just double blanking it. Oh, Lord. <laughs> up you know it's like just planing some reclaimed lumber right yeah Okay. 
not bad. Um, a little jiggly. Yeah. Uh, and um, you're a, you're a little slow. Okay. See how you're undercut? Uh huh. You're undercut. Your machine's set pretty high right now. Okay. But um, you're a little undercut. See see the crown on that? Yeah. Okay. Jiggly? Yeah. We don't want to be jiggly. No jiggles. No jiggles. So that so all that tells me is that can all be cleaned up. Okay. So that's perfect. Um, you got plenty of penetration there on the next. Nice and steady. Uh huh. But not too slow. Okay. Not too fast. And not I too can, slow. I can weld from left to right as well, right? You can drag it, but you're better off pushing. Okay. All right. That's the flavor of the month. Push <laughs> rather than pull. Ready? Yes. Try to straighten it up a little bit. Okay. And then slow down just a little bit. Okay, cool. Other than that, that's a, that's a perfect ball. Look at it. The only thing, the only thing that would make it more better is if the, both edges were absolutely parallel. If you didn't have that little bump in the middle. Mm -hmm. See that little bump right in the middle? Yeah, yeah. And you see how the see how the weld looks pointy? Mm -hmm. This crown? That tells me you're going fast. Okay. That's actually the that's a it the, when that's Nice and round. Mm -hmm. That's the perfect speed. Okay, cool. That sounded good. That sounded real good. It is real good. I heard it all the way over there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nice. Part of part of wiring welding mm -hmm. is you mm -hmm. hearing it. It should okay. sound. It should sound like frying bacon. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, do you see anything wrong with that? Uh, not that I would know, but yeah, looks good looks enough to me. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit more. Okay. Just to, I mean, just a butt here. Okay. That looked, that looked absolutely perfect. That was absolutely perfect. Awesome. That 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 is your best <laughs> weld so far. Sweet. Yeah. Little fast towards the end. Okay. But you see how it's it, it's got a little bit of crown to it. Mm -hmm. But it's not. You don't want it flat. You want to have some crown to the weld. Okay. Um, ideally, it wants to have little half moon shapes. Just a you know a little convex, uh -huh. you know. So I would okay. call that a damn good weld. Sweet. Considering it's like your eighth weld. <laughs> yeah, in my life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a perfect weld. All right, Ruth. Those little up. ripples look great. Let's see. Do I have another tip? Yeah. Oh, to move that wherever you want to move it. Okay. Um, get comfortable. Um, nice practice, you know, your, your passes. You want to be about, look on this side, Ruth. You want to be like this, kind of like that. Uh -huh. And just nice and slow, straight off the end, boom. Okay. Now remember, you can look through this helmet. Whoa, whoa. Now we're just touching the button. However you need to do it. Yeah, Ruth, I found it helpful to, because you can look through that one with it down. Oh. So that way you don't have to yeah. mess around with it. The, the art of putting the helmet down before you strike is is a acquired thing. <laughs> okay. All right. I think I got it. She does got it. She does got it. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a bebop in the middle. Yeah. But other than that, you've got the speed down pat, woman. Th that that first half right there mm -hmm. is perfect. I mean, perfect. And, uh, there's nothing wrong with that weld in, in, in general. Uh-huh. Even with the zigzag? Yeah, that's fine. It's, that's more of a how it looks thing. 
Okay. Then, then anyway. You, and it's on top of your tack fine? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. So, um, try starting a little bit further. Um, your, your distance away was perfect. Okay. Um, your, your, um, your speed was perfect. Um, the only thing is somewhere you had a hiccup. When I weld yeah. sometimes, I'm watching my breaths. When I'm TIG welding, yeah. I have to do it real small. Yeah. And I watch my breath. The only thing I could see that you did wrong. I got would, too far away. Yep, right at the end. Yeah. Good pickup, good pickup. That's a great weld. That's a great weld. There's nothing wrong with that weld. Nothing. Zero. Absolutely perfect. Without a doubt. I can see it the whole way. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> Put me this, in. <laughs> this is going to be interesting because now you're going to be on the other side of the weld. Right. So you can you can weld it this way. Yeah. But you, what you were just about to do was absolutely correct. Yeah. What you yeah. were just about to do. But you're still getting that. Yeah. Garrett, I want to notate the proper footwear she's wearing. The proper footwear <laughs> for for welding. Yep. Do you practice? And then let me know when you're ready. I've noticed that she takes a lot more time <laughs> to do the practice. That's probably why it comes out better. That's, yeah, <laughs> she's got more patience than you and I. <laughs> Next time I come to weld, I'm going to eat breakfast before I come over. You do that. So I'm not all tweaked out. Trust me, it does not help. Having the shakes? Yeah. I've done it. It doesn't work. I've always had like low blood sugar issues. Really? That, yeah. I get like super shaky. I've never had that issue. I only had it when I drank too much. The yeah. Night I could take a nap by the time she's done. <laughs> <laughs> I jumped in on purpose and she. she, she. <laughs> okay, here we go. Got it. You got the speed down pat, girl. Oh, I thought there was going to be another zigzag in there. No, you got the speed down. You got it, everything. You, 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 the All only right. thing I would say on that one is you, you were a little bit further away than normal. Yeah. But there's, I mean, that's so marginal. The weld is perfect. The, I, that's, there's nothing, you get pr proud of that all day long. That's like, those are perfect, two perfect welds. Look at that. Two perfect welds. And I'm not kidding you. I mean, if you were to show that to anybody, that they'd tell you, oh yeah, that person's been welding for decades. <laughs> After some thought and further understanding of the tension the chain plates will be under, Rolf wants to have us come back and run a few more welds on each side. So what's the next step after this? Um, for the chain plates specifically. So they're just gonna drill holes and then Temporarily mount them up on the boat, more or less where they need to go, just the top hole. And then that's how they're going to stay until we get the mast up. Because um, I want to hang the shrouds up and then kind of let them align to the angle of the shrouds. And that'll tell us exactly where to drill the rest of the holes. Okay. Um, but we can go ahead and clean them up and paint them? Yeah, and once we. Once we drill the top hole and get that hole in the boat, then it's located, then we can paint the hull. So. Sweet. I know you're excited to do. <laughs> yes. And is there like two dead eyes per chain plate? Uh, one dead eye per chain plate. Okay. No. Two dead eyes. One, I mean, one dead eye. Per attached chain plate. to the chain plate, and, and then another, a, there's another dead eye attached with. To the, the shroud. shroud. Okay. The landers go through it. Okay. Yeah, so two. So we'll have to make 16. Five. Cool. Yeah. And do the ones that go to the shroud get a like, strap also? No. No. The shroud itself just wraps around it. 
So then the next thing to make is just eight straps. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. <laughs>